Welcome to today's lecture. We are going to be learning about the integrated rate law for chemical reactions. And remember, chemical reactions involve the disappearance of reactants and the appearance of products. And we're going to integrate first order reactions for the most part because uh, there, it's fairly tricky to do second and third order reactions involving more than one reactant. So if we do a second order, we're gonna do a second order reaction, but we're only gonna use one reactant. Um, we're gonna spend most of our time just studying that situation where there's one reactant. So, so the uh, equation we're gonna look at today is the consumption of N2O5 producing NO2 and O2. And uh, we are going to be looking at the disappearance of N2O5. Now, for this particular chemical reaction, as in all chemical reactions, to determine rates, we look at the, either the disappearance or the appearance of substances. So we look at the disappearance of the reactant. We look at the appearance of the products, whichever one is easiest to study. So, and we vary, we do different trials with different concentrations of the N2O5, and we study initial rates to see how quickly the N2O5 is disappearing. In each successive trial, we vary the concentrations of NO2 and see how that impacts on the rate. And when that is done, we can arrive at a rate equation, which the rate of change of the concentration of N2O5 uh, this is the weighting factor. Now remember the weighting factor. Uh, in this case, the weighting factor is minus one for N2O5 because it is a reactant, it's disappearing. It's positive two for the NO2 appearing, and it's positive for half for the O2. Those weighting factors are used to create an overall rate which can be used to represent the entire reaction. Because if we look at the individual rates, they aren't all the same. NO2 will appear at twice the rate at which N2O5 disappears. So that's why we use an overall rate and we use weighting factors, which we call nu. So the one in this equation for R equals K times concentration of N2O5 it is not, does not come from the one in the coefficient in this reaction. Again, it comes from experimental data. So it was established it was a first order reaction. And in a first order reaction, of course, the exponent is one. So if I doubled the concentration of NO2, what would you expect to happen to the rate? Well, I would hope you would think the rate would also double because it's to the fact to the power of one. Now, if it was a second order reaction and I tripled the concentration of NO2, what should happen is it should increase by three to the power of two, which is nine. It will increase, the rate will increase by a factor of nine times. To show you how to relate the concentration changes with the rates using the rate equations. So here is some data for that particular chemical reaction. And we can see the N2O5 is indeed disappearing over time. And you can also see how long did it take for half of the original material to disappear. Well, half of the uh, N2O5, if it started at one mole per liter, half of it would be 0.5. The length of time it took was to go from zero to T1 half. Well, let's compare it to how long it took to go from 0.5 moles per liter to 0.25 moles per liter. Well, it looks like it took the same amount of time. Upon initial examination of this curve of concentration versus time for this reaction, we can see since the half times are the same, that indeed the uh, reaction appears to be first order. That is characteristic of all first order reactions. So now the next thing we're going to do is develop the uh, integrated rate expression. So here is the differential rate expression which means the, we're gonna look at the rate of change of the N2O5 over time. And the, uh, again, the weighting factor is minus one over one, or one over minus one actually, because it's being, the N2O5 is being consumed in the ratio of one mole. So we're gonna take the uh, derivative of N2O5 and we're gonna compare it to minus K concentration dt. And 
what we're going to do now is please note that we've taken the concentration of N205. We want to put the concentrations on the same side. We want to put the time on the opposite side. So what we've done is we've divided both sides by the concentration of N205. And on this side, that's represented by 1 over the concentration of N205 uh, times the derivative of N205. And that's now equal to minus K by itself. So we are now going to integrate that differentiated expression. And we're going to integrate it uh, for the concentration from at any time to 0. So the concentration has changed, of course. And we're going to integrate the other side, again, from time t out here to time 0. And when we do that, we get the natural log of N205 minus the natural log of N205. 0 equals minus k from t to t0, where t0 is equal to 0. And we take this particular equation now, and we rearrange it. So what we're going to do is add the ln of N205 to both sides, effectively taking this term and moving it to the right. Now this is the integrated rate expression. That is very useful. We'll show you what we can use it for. But what is important, we arranged it this way so that you can see that really this is a linear relationship. Y equals mx plus b, you're familiar with that as a, as a relationship between two variables on a graph of y versus x, where k is the slope uh, from y equals mx plus b, and b is the y-intercept. So if this is a linear relationship, if you were to graph the ln of the concentration of N205 and plot it versus time, then you would expect to get a straight line. So here is, in fact, the graph of this for this particular chemical reaction of the ln of the concentration, not the concentration, but the ln of the concentration versus time. So it is a straight line. And the slope, in this case, the slope is always the weighting factor times k. In this case, because the slope is a negative slope and we want a positive number, we know that the value will be minus the k. Okay, So the slope of the line is a minus slope. We want it to become a, to a positive. So to get the slope, we're going to take the negative value of that. So um, now, if we're going to talk about a more general equation, instead of just referring to this particular chemical change, we're going to refer to any chemical change where a substance A is being consumed in the quantities of A. The weighting factor will be, in this case, minus A. Because it's being consumed, it's decreasing. Well, again, if we go through the same process that we just did for N205, we get an integrated rate equation that looks like this, where the ln of A equals uh, the weighting factor, also called nu, nu k times t plus the ln of A at zero. So again, y, this term is y, the ln of A on the y-axis. x, in this case, is time. Here's time on the x-axis. And vak is the slope. The ln of A0 is the y-intercept. In other words, where does a straight line go through y? That's the ln of A, which was the original concentration of N205. And remember, the ln of uh, 1 is 0. So now, this relationship has to be a straight line when we plot the ln of N205 versus time. And k will always be a positive value. And as I said, the ln of 0 is always equal to 1. And because A, in this case, is being consumed, the quantity of will be decreasing. And as we go down, the reactant is being used up. Now. That was a first order process. The concentration versus time graph is not linear. It's a curve. The, uh, when you look at the curve, what you can see here for the reaction of A being consumed, B being produced, C being produced, 
you can see the overall rate of reaction would be equal to the rate at which A is consumed or the rate at which B is being produced. But the concentration of C, of course, uh, C will be appearing at half the rate that, that B is appearing. So the overall rate, again, the weighting factor, nu would be minus one for A, plus one for B, plus one half for C. And we can see that's reflected in this particular curve. A is going down and B is being produced at about the same rate and C is being produced at half the rate that B is being produced. So when we look at the amount of time it took to go from one mole per liter to half a mole per liter, again, for this particular example, we are seeing the length of time is the half time. How does that compare to how long it took to go from half a mole per liter to a quarter mole per liter? From one half 0.5 to 0.25. Well, it looks like it's the same amount of time. What does that tell us again? It tells us it's a first order reaction. So a preliminary analysis for a curve of concentration versus time for a chemical reaction, if it yields half times that are equal, we know it's a first order reaction, which means it's going to be R equals K times the concentration of whatever the reactant is to the power of one. So if we graph the lawn of A and place it over time, you will again get a straight line if it's a first order reaction. Now we're going to use first order reactions to figure out K. So we can figure out K. Uh, and then we can also figure out half times. So we know one over the weighting factor dA dt equals the concentration of A to the power of one. Again, it's a first order reaction. So we could create that particular equation. Again, we just showed you how to do that. But at half time, the concentration of A is really equal to the concentration of A at time zero divided by two. So now I can do a little bit of substitution. For the concentration of A at any time, or in this case at half time, instead of the concentration of A here, it's the concentration of A divided by two. That's the only thing that's changed from this equation to this equation. Well, I'm gonna do a little bit of rearranging, so I'm going to move this term to the other side by subtracting on both sides, and then I'm going to move the uh, new A K T half to the left side again by subtracting from both sides, and we get this particular equation here. Now we're gonna use the uh, law, one of the mathematical laws, where the ln of A minus the ln of B equals the ln of A divided by B, and we're gonna take this side, and we're now going to change it by the negative sign now becomes a division sign because of that mathematical relationship. But remember, what is the ln of the concentration of A divided by the ln of the concentration of A zero divided by two? Well, this was a concentration of A at half time. It was half. So if I have one and divide it into halves, I'm going to get two halves. So that's where the ln of two comes from. And Again, uh, we can rewrite the equation. So this now becomes the ln of two and minus nu a k t one half equals ln of two can be rearranged. We can rearrange it in terms of k by dividing both sides by b a and time one half. Now, because that's a minus, the whole thing becomes negative. So here's how we can find the value for k. k is equal to the minus ln of 2 divided by Va times t1 half, or the length of time it takes for half of the substance that you started with to be, to be remaining in the container. So that would be if I started with uh, 24 particles, how long did it take to end up with 12 particles? And then the next half time would be how long did it take for the 12, the 12 particles to become six particles. So 
This is a particularly convenient way to find K because we don't need any concentrations. All you need is the half time. And there's different ways of finding the half time. So to summarize the first order reactions, here's the equation for the differential form of the equation. Uh, the power here is one, we don't write ones. That's how we know it's first order. When we look at it, what is the exponent that the concentration of A is raised to, or the concentration of any of the reactants from any chemical change? In an integrated form, here's the equation. And to find the, uh, this quantity, the uh, new A, K, again, if we make a, a graph of the lawn of K versus time, and measure the slope and take the negative value of it, we find it, that quantity. Okay, that's how we find K. So we can use, we can find K using half times instead of a graph. If we just know the half times, we can find K by taking the minus quantity of the ln of two divided by the new A, which again is um, the new A is that weighting factor multiplied by half time. So remember that for first order reactions, the half time should never change during the duration of the reaction. It's gonna stay constant, always in a first order reaction. Now we're gonna look at uh, second order and zeroth order reactions. We've taken a detailed look at the first order reactions. And how do we tell whether a reaction is zero order, first order, or second order by looking at it? Well, we have to have some data where we graph the change in concentration over time. And we know uh, the rate expression, if it's zeroth order, is going to be R equals K times concentration of the reactant A to the power of zero. Well, what is any number raised to the power of zero? It's one. So R will equal K in that case. And when I graph uh, a zeroth order reaction, what I'm going to see is a straight line for a concentration versus time graph. It's a linear relationship. Now, why is it a linear relationship? I want you to think about that for a second. So in this case, chemical reaction is A being consumed. Over time, the rate doesn't change. Well, to give an example of a, a real life situation where the rate doesn't change, Imagine going to a Queens football game and you're, uh, there's only one person selling tickets at the ticket booth. This has happened to me many times. And it doesn't matter if you have 20 people on the line or 100 people on the line. The rate at which people are going to be given tickets is the same because there's only one person that is actually selling you the tickets. So uh, the quantity of people in the line isn't, could change, but the rate in which they get tickets doesn't. Well. The same thing happens in chemical changes involving catalysts. When a catalyst is a surface catalyst, for instance, your catalytic converter in your car, there is uh, rare metals in the converter, and those rare metals serve as a surface area to adhere to oxides of nitrogen that are converted back into nitrogen and oxygen. And there's a limited space on that particular surface. So it doesn't matter if I change the quantities of gases entering, the rate at which they're changed into, um, back into oxygen and nitrogen is going to be the same, no matter what. Just like, if, just like the example I gave you with the uh, people in line. So notice, however, that the half times are changing. And again, the example I'll use is that lineup for the tickets. There's 100 people in line. How long is it going to take for the line to go to 50 people? And then how long is it going to take for the line to go from 50 to 25 people? Well, those times are going to change. Similarly, if there's another lineup with 500 people in the line, how long is it going to take to go to 250? Those half times again are, will change. And that's one of the characteristics of a zeroth order reaction, is the half times are constantly changing. So we have to develop a, an equation to find out half times. And again, this particular graph is for A 
moles of a substance A changing into products. And the products obviously are represented by the green and the yellow lines. And it looks like the green one is increasing at a rate that's twice as great as the yellow. So now again, the differential form of the equation is uh, R equals K times concentration of A to the power of zero this time, which equals a constant. And when we take the derivative, of the equation, we end up with the concentration of A at any time minus concentration A at time zero equals the weighting factor times K from T1 to T0 from any time other than T0. And the integrated form of the equation is the concentration of A equals the weighting factor. And all I've done from this equation is I've, I've simply added concentration A at time zero to both sides to get an expression that can be useful to us. And here it is. That's the integrated form of that reaction. Now keep in mind all these equations are given to you on an information sheet that you'll be able to use for all evaluations. Nobody is expecting you to memorize these. Okay. And then the concentration of A is changing over time and the original amount of A, of course, we simply set as a certain quantity. So Again, we can see that this expression takes the form y equals mx plus b, where y is the concentration of A, m in this case is the weighting factor times k, and b is the y-intercept where the concentration crosses the line where at time zero. So, and that's the original concentration of A. Now, that is going to yield a straight line when we graph it. So now what I want you to think about is let's talk about half time. Well, half time is, again, like I said, the length of time it takes for the original amount to, be, uh, to go down to half of what it was. So if we started with 64 particles, how long will it take to get to 32 particles? So and again, it's a zeroth order reaction. The rate will be constant here. Uh, and the concentration of, of A, when I divide it by two, that's the length of time it took to get to half time. So, so when we subtract here, we, we subtract the, con the original concentration from the concentration at half time. And what are we going to get when we subtract? One half, take away one, is minus one half. So minus one half is equal to nu a k t one half. And when we rearrange this equation by dividing both sides by uh, nu a t one half, and there was already a two on the bottom, we get the concentration of a minus the concentration of a, the initial, divided by two times nu a time one half. So here's a convenient way to find k for zeroth order reactions. And again, notice that there are many, many half times possible. If you take a look at this equation, the length of time it takes to go from one mole per liter to half a mole per liter was this amount of time. The length of time it took to go from half a mole per liter to a quarter mole per liter was this time. Now, that's like saying again with our lineup, how long did it take if we started with 128 people? Um, how long is it going to take to get to 64? And then how long is it going to take to go from 64 to 32? Obviously, the length of time it's going to take for each successive half time is decreasing. And that's what the graph clearly shows here. Now, again, at half time, the concentration of A is equal to the original concentration divided by two, the concentration of time zero. And uh, we make that equal to the uh, new A, K, time of one half plus eight at time zero. And if we rearrange this equation, we end up with this form of the equation. Simply switch the two sides. Now, in this case, 1a take away half an a is half an a. And that's why we end up with half an a. 
And here's a, a fairly useful equation that tells us the relationship between K and half time. So half time can be determined by taking the original concentration of A, dividing it by two times the weighting factor times K. Very useful equation. And the half time, of course, can be anything. Because as we change the concentration of A, the quantity of this calculation will change. So now let's talk about second order reactions. For second order reactions, you can see that the exponent is two here. Rather than one for first order or zero for zeroth order, the exponent is two. So a graph of second order reactions could look like this. We can see it's a curve, a sloping curve coming down. And we can see in this case, this is studying the rate of disappearance of A and the rate of appearance of B and the rate of appearance of C. We can see again that B is appearing at a rate twice as fast as C. And the rate of A is being, uh, the A is disappearing at the same rate as B is appearing. Because A is a reactant and B is a product. Now, let's take a look at the half times here. If we start at one mole per liter and go to half a mole per liter, how long did that take to go to half a mole per liter at this point on the curve? Well, this is the length of time it took. Now let's look at how long it's going to take to get from half a mole per liter to a quarter mole per liter, which is this period of time on the curve from here to here. Well, we can see it's changed. For second order reactions, the half times will be changing. So for a second order reaction, again, any second order reaction where uh, this is the weighting factor again, or the coefficient in front of the A, it doesn't come from the rate expression. It has to do with the balanced chemical equation that you start with. We are consuming A and we're making products. So the rate will equal one over the weighting factor, DA DT, and equals KA squared because it's a second order reaction. So when we take the integral, we end up with this particular equation here. And then we're going to multiply uh, everything by minus one. So that becomes plus one, minus one, minus one. And then we're going to add one over a to the power of zero to both sides. Okay. And that's the result. So this is the integrated form of the equation we typically use because now we can see the y equals mx plus b scenario again, where 1 over the concentration of a is now y, and minus nu k is m, and 1 over a concentration of A at zero is B, or the y-intercept. So what are you going to expect to get when we graph one over the concentration versus time for this reaction? Well, when we graph one over, we should get a straight line. And again, the slope will be minus nu A k. And the y-intercept will be one over the concentration of A at time zero. So the slope, again, allows us to solve for K. So that's one way we can find K for second order reactions. We don't graph the lawn of A versus time. We graph one over A versus time, and you get a straight line. If you did graph the lawn of A over time, you wouldn't get a straight line. So, so K can be found using half times. Now, let's see how that can be done. So, Find how long it takes to go from the original con from an initial concentration to half the original concentration. So I in this case representing the initial. So so one over a equals minus uh, mu nu kt plus one over a to the power of zero. So now half of a is the length of time it takes to get to half. So I can rearrange this equation. Instead of the original concentration of A, now I have half the original concentration of A. So, so, uh, and now a half of A 
and one over a, we can uh, we can rectify those. One over a half of a is really two over a. So the length of time for a half life or the length of time is one minus one over the weighting factor times K times the concentration of A initial. Once again, notice there's an infinite number of half times that are possible. As we change the concentration of A, we're going to get a different value for T half time. So let's summarize what we've learned here. So when we see a concentration of reactant versus time curve that's straight, which order is that? Well, it seems to me that's a zero order reaction. And here are the rate expressions that we have developed over the course of this lesson. So we can find the slope of this line again um, to find K. And we can find the half time equation using this relationship from K and minus new A is the slope. And when we look at a rate versus time curve for zeroth order reactions, again, the rate stays constant. We look at this situation here, when we have a concentration of reactant that's sloping and we graph the lawn of the concentration of A versus time and it's straight, that tells us the relationship between ln A and the concentration. So that tells us it's indeed a first order reaction. And again, we can use the slope of the line. We can develop rate expressions for first order reactions. Uh, the exponent is one here for first order reaction. The integrated form of the equation looks like that. And we can find K using the graph of the ln of A versus time. And we can find the half time equation, the length of time it takes for half the material we started with to disappear using this equation here, and rearranging it if we know K. And the last example, the second order reaction we looked at, it's a curve again, another curve. It's a slightly different type of curve. We can find half times and see the half times are different. The half times, remember, for first order reactions are always the same. In this case, the half times are different. But we don't graph, for a second order reaction, we don't graph the ln of A versus time. We graph one over A versus time a second order reaction. And when that produces a linear result, we end up with a slope. And again, the slope can be used to find K. So the rate expression, here it is for rate. Notice for a second order, again, the exponent is two. The integrated form of the equation looks like that. And the graph to find K, again, the slope. And the half time, we can, the half time equation, once we know K, can be determined using this relationship. So, as always, I expect you to uh, answer the homework questions. Please do the homework questions diligently. The only way you're going to be able to learn how to do these rate problems is to work at them. So, signing out. Thank you for tuning in.